Yeah, I would tell them not to be a wanker like those people. <laughs> Again, it goes back to the spirit of the brand. If uh, you are really a brand that is creating culture, a brand that believes in creating messages, not reverberating other people's ideas, then your job is to make sure that your typography, like your copywriting, like your photography, is generated by you, not looking at your competitors and say, hey, if they do it, we should do it. I teach designers that have never designed a typeface how to do it. I tell them the dirty secrets and uh, explain what is the process from the aesthetic to the technical point of view, just so that they know how they can continue if they want to become type designers or, or how to deal with type designers and how to order typefaces or how to choose typefaces or how to look at the quality of a typeface. One of the most iconic pieces of typography from from when I was young was Absolute Vodka, where they just put that one piece of type and that silhouette of that bottle and they've just consistently kept it like that forever that you don't even you can be browsing through that magazine and it'll jump out at you in in half a second yeah but then there is the new guy who comes in and is paid to perform and uh, his ego and usually it's a guy probably <laughs> it's rarely a woman um, <laughs> is usually a guy who's hired to bring the company to a new levels and uh, he needs to show that he knows how to do things and it changes everything. So it's very difficult to maintain the, what's good about a brand. The font of Absolute Vodka is like kind of like a shitty Futura Bolt Condensed. Mm. It's not a great font. Nevertheless, it doesn't fucking matter. It's the use that has been done and the fact that you tell me about Absolute Vodka and I have immediately the image of that word mm. because repetition is important and not being afraid of changing one of the things that sort of saddens me um is when you see brands uh, especially like heritage brands people like balenciaga kind of going with the trend and removing a, an, a piece of typography that stood for 60 years 70 years and replacing it with a sort of characterless you know, kind of thing. And then they, they shrouded in this idea of being digital friendly and kind of modernizing themselves, but then they are sort of falling in line with everybody else. Um, but I, I guess my question is not about that. It's, it's, what do you, what do you say to somebody who's in the process of, of rebranding their company or about to do a brand and they've kind of seen all of these, iconic brands one after the other kind of follow this trend there's this pressure to make that same choice to just go and get a font like a gotham or whatever and typeset your thing and now i'm kind of done i've fallen in line with everyone what is your counter argument to this sort of blandification that's happening in so many of these big brands yeah i would tell them not to be a wanker like those people <laughs> i mean you your job is to if you're, I think that has to do with, again, it goes back to the spirit of the brand. Mm. If uh, you are really a brand that has, that is creating culture, that, a brand that believes in creating messages, not reverberating other people's ideas, then your job is to make sure that your typography, like your copywriting, like your photography is generated by you. I mean, not looking at your competitors and say, hey, if they do it, we should do it. Of course, you need to have educated people in the C-suite or people that are understanding the power of this. Sometimes uh, I'm able to make them understand the value of this. Sometimes we don't, but when we do, the, the results are incredible, incredible, because it, 
it's actually a amazing way to to save money in advertising you can have just a copy line with your own typeface and if you do it constantly also that's another very important mm. you cannot just say if i start doing my rebranding right now and i don't have a big uh, advertising budget people are going to start knowing my company in 10 years because I keep repeating the same message, the, the message with the same typeface. And it's a matter of being constant and not losing sight of the long-term objective, which is to make sure that people understand who you are. And of course, instead, if you're a big company who can spend uh, half a billion dollars in advertising, the moment that you start communicating with your typeface, your own typeface, in five months, people automatically will recognize you from the typography. And if you spend $250,000 for a photo campaign that gets used for one season, and then you end up spending the same amount for a font that is your own, that you can control and own, that you use for 20 years, the cost is negligible. negligible completely. Hello YouTube, I'm Ross Drakes. I'm the founder of Nice Work and thank you so much for your time at watching this video. If you're seeing me, it means you made it all the way to the end, so we've at least done something right. If you enjoyed this, we'd love it if you could hit that subscribe button and that thumbs up, it really helps the channel. And I think more important than that is if you know someone who might need to hear this, if you think someone out there who, who needs this, this message in their life, please spread the link because it, it makes a huge difference to the world and it allows us to fulfill our message of making sure that there are no more bad brands in the world. Thank you very much and we'll catch you in the next video.